Team 5, Slate 2, take 1. A true story based on the first unsuccessful colony of America. It's about a man called John White. And his personal journey and what it felt like to leave his daughter. To land an arm on the island and people vanished. To find them all gone. It's about what happened to them and how he wants to try and get back. The story of Roanoke begins um, in two different locations, uh, England and Roanoke. In Roanoke, um, the colony are struggling to survive without food and the character of Eleanor is left um, to be in charge after her father, John White, has returned back to England. It's been gone for so long. I'm playing Eleanor Dare, um, the daughter of John White. She's 19, she's pregnant. She has a husband, Anna Lewis. She's brought to this island thinking that she's going to be taken care of and things and uh, her father abandons her, leave, leaves her in charge of the colony, which is a big thing. They'll return expediently, I'm sure of it. I play um, Anania Stair. He's the husband of um, of Eleanor. Together, Ananias and Eleanor, their, their, their drive is to be the governor's presence on this new colony, in this new land, while he, while he is away. Ananias finds himself in a very difficult position because he's torn between his allegiance to Eleanor and her firm belief in her father's convictions and the men. I find you Calm down. Calm down. Calm down. The English story sees uh, White's return and meeting up with Sir Walter Raleigh and um, collecting supplies and trying to find a voyage back to Roanoke to bring these supplies to the colony. I play John White. He's got his daughter. He's, he's had to go back to England to get supplies. Um, he's, he's back in England. He can't go back to Roanoke because of the Spanish Armada. And his daughter is there. His personal story is his fight to get back to Roanoke to, to his daughter. Uh, my character is a character called uh, Simon Fernandez, who is of uh, Spanish descent. There's lots of history between John White and Simon Fernandez. They're old friends. Certain events happen to them that um, means they sort of fall out with each other, you know. I won't hesitate. I play Nathaniel Hawthorne, who is introduced in the film as Simon's first mate. He's fiercely loyal to John White, even at times where John White loses his sense of reality, but does what he has to do to survive. White is there, he's there Simon's first, first mate. He's a dirty, rough character. He's, he's full of ambition, but he's not really a likeable character. Um, he kind of tries to persuade Simon to get rid of uh, John White in a, in a kind of nasty way. And he's an evil character because he doesn't think of anyone else. He's very selfish and just thinks about himself. Gibson, go and fetch Nathaniel's belongings and anything else. The character that I play um, is called Goodson. Um, he's sort of one of the comic interludes for Roanoke. He's a little bit sort of scatty. He's really sort of trying to suck up to Simon, really, because like he's, you know, his mentor, and you know, he really looks up to him. I play Walter Army. He's close to the sources of power, and he has a relationship with one of the main characters. John White, um, as a friend. This war will not last long, and you will return before Christmas. They did want someone who's going to be like a symbolic figure, a figure of authority, who runs through the film. 
It's one of the greatest unsolved mysteries of America's history. It took one or two years before the actual treatment um, that we now have today came about. But in the end we felt the story deserved uh, a classic um, period drama feel to it, um, to narrate the real story of history. I wrote a ten page treatment on the film, which tried to relate between both Roanoke and England. The struggle that the Roanoke colony were having, along with the struggle John White was having. I sent the ten page treatment to Shane Roberts, who decided to then write the script. He gave the characters life. And he, he also invented a, a number of new characters. Moving forward, like that's just one more reason why he's like. He wrote the script from the treatment that Bertie had done, and it was just it's just amazing. Some of the dialogue that came out it just it wasn't in the treatment. It was just superb. When the script came back from Shane, um, it was brilliant. It was it described everything as if you'd. Um, so when I read the treatment, you have a vision, yes. obviously, as anybody does when they sort of read a book or anything like that, and the script just all of that to life. It's quite intense, it goes sort of at peaks that's like ah, really exciting and then goes down and it's like ah, then it goes up to peaks again and it's really, well it's jagged so it makes it exciting. Very sort of well rounded really. It was fantastic, the, the, the script was amazing. The thing that surprised me was the scope of it, was the sheer scale of what they were going to achieve. There were parts of it which I kind of thought that were, were so complex and so exciting so driving such huge dramatic set pieces uh, and and the balance that out with very very tender character based um, interactions that was the first thing that hit me with the script was the balance between the two the thing that surprised me about reading the script was when seeing sort of for the first time actual scenes form together and, and the dialogue i thought was amazing and um it, it, I was really intrigued about what was what was going to happen, and, and there was um, a lot of mystery. And, and what kept me going and reading the script was, was that I wanted to find out what was what, how these characters were going to develop, what was going to happen. So we've got a lot of elements there that work really nicely together, and I think will um, capture a lot of audiences. Within Roanoke, we wanted to produce um, a very modern take on a period drama. We had two worlds which we could design, the world of America and the world of England. We basically discussed the different looks of Roanoke. America was to be very green and very new, whereas the sort of London world was supposed to be great colours, but dirty down. I worked from what he gave me and I sort of just went away and just come up with some of the, the drawings and introduced the colour palettes into some sort of concept art. And so I had to try and create an idea of what the scene would look like with the ships sailing past the cane fields and, and, and in the dock. And just that whole idea of the, um, of the island as well, the fort. I mean, an artist that's always inspired me was Turner, but I mean, the script was inspiring enough, really. I met up with Gary and Carl, and they took me through the script and the idea behind the story. I was in charge of getting some of the props together and uh, also helping on location and set dressing. I made some of the maps that I filmed during White's room and um, used the aging process that everyone used when they were kids of using those tea bags. Roanoke from a design point of view is a lot of research into the specific time period for this film. The great thing about Roanoke was we were forced, in a way, to go around the country um, and shoot in a lot of different locations. Originally how it started, we were going to do the whole thing in a studio. We were going to build sets for all the locations. We had to find authentic locations um, to the 16th century um, that would work for us. Yeah, we, we had to do a lot of research on the internet, um, mainly, and um, we 
for the people we knew to find out places where rules were appropriate for us to, to film at because obviously being the 16th century, everything has to look authentic that we use and, and on a large scale as well. So if we're shooting outdoors, we need everything in the shop to look like it's from the time period. So we couldn't just couldn't create ourselves in the budget we had. So it was a lot of finding these outdoor museums places which would represent what we were trying to show. So when we found the locations, they were fantastic. We shot the market scene on the first evening of the first day at the Wilm Downing Museum, which is down in Chichester. It was a perfect location for the English setting of Rowan. It was just perfect, ideal, internal location as well as the external locations. I thought it was a beautiful location in there. It really suited the script. It was really nice seeing it used in a different way. Kind of have a nice, nice look at the place. And, uh, it really gets you into the kind of the mood and the uh, the period of the piece as well. The sets were already made for us, and we didn't have to worry. You know, we just could go in and just start filming. We had twenty plus extras there. We weren't just going out and finally shooting something you've been thinking about for ages. We were we were there on the first day sort of man management for 30 odd people and that in itself was quite a big challenge yeah. because it wasn't just about filming. We used five or six of their houses and we, we, had, we were lucky enough we shot there in the summer and we were able to shoot from uh, 6 till 9am and then in the evening from 6 till 9pm. We had um, been getting up at 3 in the morning going to bed at around midnight for about 4 or 5 days meaning we were getting about 3 hours sleep mm -hmm. each night. I was not expecting you to greet me on this night. Sheer beauty, I think the scenes that we did down in Sussex um, and a beach called West Wittery, totally deserted, it, absolutely wonderful. In the summer, but early evening, going through the dark, and, it, and it's brilliant when you get something like that because the fires were there, the sea was there, big open beach, really fresh night. It helps so much because everything's there. The, just the whole atmosphere, you're not having to create an atmosphere in your head. Being on the beach at Fleet Pond was beautiful. Just, it was summer, it was, you would not have thought you were in Fleet at all. Going to the beaches in, in Fleet was fantastic, just for the sheer scope of it, to be, to be outside. It was really, Kind of like passionate and really big out open space, and it's very free. Doing all the beach scenes, which was in the, the height of summer. In the hottest day of the summer, everything there looked foreign, and you just walked in, you felt like you were in some exotic locations. Fleet was the first um, location which sparked the actual making of Roanoke to happen. Fleet was a nature reserve, and we used uh, Fleet purely because of the fact that it was an area that looked like it wasn't in this country. And um, trying to represent a foreign land in America. When, we, when there's no way we're going to be able to go film in America, we had to find somewhere here that could represent that. We did it! We did a bit of shooting on the Golden Hind, the replica which is uh, based in London, right by London Bridge. And, uh, you know, I'd never been on it before, but it was quite an extraordinary experience, very, very atmospheric, and it made the things we had to do um, much more real. 16th century ship that was actually used by the Protestants. Oh, great. great, wasn't it? So it's it's exactly the same style as the ship they would have travelled on to Rome. We had a chance to explore around the boat and it feels really, really realistic. I think I was the only one that could actually stand up underneath on the, on the smaller decks, whereas everyone else had to kneel down. We had to get through 36 scenes in six hours. We were on it for no, a day or two. We had two units because we had so many scenes to get done, we had to split in half and film from two different sections of the ship. And Bertie was up on a higher deck. And we were in the smallest little room, little cabin as part of the boat. And I was down on the lower deck filming a scene with Simon and Waits. And uh, that's one of my favourite scenes. We stumbled across Westerner and the Anglo Saxon village, which um, uh, up in Barry St Evans. We used that to represent the actual colony, kind of acted in itself as a port that um, we used as, as Roanoke. Even though the time period was 16th century, the, the people going over to Roanoke wouldn't have been able to build buildings that they would have had in England, so it would have been a limited um, style of fat routes and wouldn't 
exterior, so it was more like an Anglo-Saxon village than anything else. I love being at West Oak here. It's brilliant. Um, it, you can really get into character and you can really sort of just feel how it would have been to live. It's quite an amazing place. We had beautiful, beautiful days filming there. Going to the winter shoots being here with all the, with all the trees in the background bigger and again in big open space it gives you a sense of context to the place, it gives it a texture that you can feel. As I said, I will not try to stop I pondered them. The Bristol location is the SA Spirit Britain, which is connected to Matthew, which is a uh, long boat off period. And then we stumbled across the dockyard of the museum of the SA Spirit Britain. The dockyard is very authentic for our piece and although there are elements that we had to cut out of the frame, it proved to be another fantastic location for the filming of Rome. It's a magnificent vessel and of course the whole atmosphere created on the, on the quayside was just extraordinary and uh, I can well imagine that uh, the camera guys, the directors etc. made full use of the wonderful atmosphere, quite an experience. Being an old, old Bradfieldian, I went back there and asked if we could um, use their pool to shoot him. During the reshoots, we were able to film a very ambitious underwater scene. The underwater shoot I thought it was brilliant because that felt like a real stunt sequence and something you don't get to do every day. And my costume weighed a ton, so it felt like I was drowning. Cause it doesn't look like a swimming pool, you'd think it would we were able to turn all the main lights off and just use our underwater ones and it just made it look murky and grimy, it was fantastic. I had a, a camera in a waterproof bag provided by Angela. Sam and I took turns recording underwater footage. It was really exciting to be there because we got to film in a completely different environment, totally surrounded in water. Cool! With Dan equipped with scuba gear provided by Broken Western his father. I think in the end Dan managed to spend a, a good two hours fully submerged. The first time I had a Dan in as well, which I've never been scuba, I've never breathed through anything. So it was uh, interesting, but I think I took, took to it quite well. Bradfield College um, is actually the source of a number of the major costumes. Uh, Nicky Maloney was very helpful in, in that sense of lending us out a number of the costumes. A lot of that was used for the principal characters and also the accessories such as aprons and yeah. bibs and stuff for all the um, mar market people. On the budget we had, there's no way we could have kitted everyone out. So um, we had to create the most minimal that we could. Alright, okay, so. Why well, I have my most about Bertie, this is constant energy that, that's necessary to do what he does. His overuse of the word fantastic is in itself fantastic. An absolute passion for his work. He, he he's a bit of a perfectionist and won't settle for anything but um, but the best. But obviously, with knows his limits, he knows what he has to work with, and he works with it. Anyone who's got that fire in their belly that early in the morning, and you can multitask and throw things around that quickly, you've got respect. It's great watching him kind of bounce off Daniel and bounce off Jenna and bounce off Angela as well, because uh, they kind of, they bring him down, <laughs> they tear him down, they point him in the right direction, and then he goes, every now and then he needs redirecting. A great person uh, to work with, uh, full of life, full of energy, or inspiring. It just makes it look good. I can't get over how he does it. He puts so much time and effort into it. And then he set his sights on what he wanted to do, and by Jingo, he got it. I love the way he works. He treats people fantastically. Um, he's uh, he's a joy to work for. He was able to sort of do a lot extremely quickly under a lot of pressure, and. You know, it's a really tight budget, so he, he, good planning and good organisation. I thought he was a really good director and really encouraging to, and 
friendly to everyone, even though you've never met us before. Bertie is very hands-on with his idea of design. He is far more hands-on than a lot of other directors would be, um, to the point that a lot of the time the decisions were always very easy to make because he knew what he wanted and he would always go for it. You want to do the best that you can for him. You know, this is his massive project that he's embarked upon and you want to do it justice. I mean, he's spent a lot of time, a lot of energy and expense really putting this all together. He's got his plan, he's focused when he's there. I think he's, I think he's being very professional about the whole thing. But he's not like a, you would expect a, a director to be like. He's down to earth and friendly and kind. He was very into getting ideas from other people, no matter who it was. You know, everyone had their input. He always conferred well what he wanted done with the extras. He's very good. He gets everyone. He gets everyone going. <laughs> <laughs> Bertie is an original, he's one of a kind, very determined, very hard working and has a fantastic vision. We've all tried to help him by getting on with everything else and let him just worry about the shot. He's got together a fantastic team. Bertie, all the crew have been absolute stars. They really make this thing work. Everybody has put in so much time and effort and just wants to make it the best that they can and it really comes across in absolutely everything. I think the crew have done extraordinarily well. The hours that they've put in, everyone's been positive, everyone's had good energy, everyone's been cheerful. They're all joined together to bring amazing things. The crew were fantastic. Very attentive, very helpful, and uh, did, got through an enormous amount of work in the most difficult conditions often, and uh, it was just great fun to do with them. Great bunch of boys and girls. We were on the ball constantly. It wasn't just what they concentrated on, but it was like them helping out as well, and then putting in their advice and kind of Bertie listening to them, and it was a kind of a, a, a real kind of group team effort, a family, if you like. There's a real professional working attitude between them all. That's all part of being on a sort of a, a professional film set that, that they are creating. It's a very small crew for the, the size of the project. We were working in most times with six people and we were doubling up. We were literally having the people there that had a physical job to do, to record the visuals, to record the audio, to make sure everything runs smoothly. Everyone knew what was needed to get, to get things done. Everyone was focused and aware that everything was, was a struggle against time. I really love being involved in other areas, which you don't really get on a professional film set. You, you have to specialise in one area and you're too busy to do anything else. We didn't have a strict hierarchy. Even though the crew had set roles, we all used our initiative and helped out on other things, from dealing with the extras, sorting out the costumes, setting up the equipment, getting the props prepared, basically making sure that everything's ready for the day's shoot. They've done really well to put a film together, a period drama, and managing to find everything that is so sort of close to this time period. The crew are all, are all amazing people. It's great fun to work with them all. We all got on so well and made it even more enjoyable. We picked a really like good bunch of people to be around and made some genuine friends. I think what made Roanoke so enjoyable to work on and effectively what made us be able to produce such a fantastic product at the end was the crew. We've been so lucky on Roanoke that the, the whole team's just come together um, from whatever they do and from whatever age they are and make something the best that it can be. The student directors and film crews of today are the big, you know, the big directors of tomorrow. The cast were brilliant, to be honest. I thought they all did a brilliant job. But the more time goes on, the more you, you get a, a richness between you all. Do you know what I mean? You get a kind of camaraderie through the cast. We've had rehearsals on sort of similar days or whatever, so although I haven't had scenes with them, I have got to know them a little bit. And they're all fantastic. They're, they fit the parts brilliantly. Nice bunch of people, um, very professional, 
um, some great characters there and you know they really kept everything upbeat on set and again everyone just wanted to do the best that they could in order to make Bertie's film look the best that it possibly can. As well as the cast, the extras, they're all amazing. There were some really, really nice people. The, the other cast members were just terrific, I must say, and uh, all got into their parts very well and uh, began to take it very seriously because it is an amazing story. I think it was amazing that they, they put so much trust in us because um, we literally put out casting calls for the actors to come and audition parts in the film and, and uh, so many people turned up and, and then we, we narrowed it down to these people and they're putting the trust and respect in us that we're going to deliver what we say we're going to deliver. A project which I hope they believed in. I've, I've, I've really, really enjoyed it. Um, just, um, just more and more and more as, as it's passed, I've enjoyed it more and more and more. I've loved working on this. I'm so privileged to have had this experience. It's, it's just been an absolutely a real journey for me and I've learned so much from it. It was fantastic, I loved it. Very rewarding, just a great experience. I think just the whole authentic feel of it, I think it is going to look brilliant and it has been a real learning curve for me and a great sort of confidence booster. It's been an adventure. The whole experience, in fact, was quite extraordinary because it's uh, slightly out of the normal one of things for me. Well, it's been a hell of a ride. I don't know, it's new experiences for me. It's amazing and it kind of puts me on an adrenaline rush. I think after this, I feel like I've really have achieved something. Um, I think we should all be very proud. Working on Brandon was an amazing experience because it was, for me personally, it was the first time getting involved in such a huge project. Um, we worked on short films before, but to do a feature film, to have so many days dedicated to, to working on it was, was something new to me. And, and, and looking back on it, it was, it was amazing. I find now that um, none of us lost interest. I'm amazed now, 10 months into it, that we still haven't lost focus. And I think we could go back and shoot it all again. I think we could go and shoot another. Um, you know, version of the script quite easily because I think we had so much fun. We can all have a chat and a laugh. Uh, it's just all the all the cast are just so good to talk to. It's everyone is just we, yeah. I just had so much fun on it and I can't wait to work with everyone again. Working on this project's been an amazing experience. I've learned so much from the crew and Bertie, and I just want to thank them for giving me the opportunity to work with them. Coming out and shooting the, this whole thing, you say thirty shooting days, whatever it was. There was no point ever that I look back on that I didn't like. Personally, I enjoyed um, the first three days at Wilton Down Museum. I think for me, having having been with the project for so long and to finally be shooting Rowan, it was, it was quite weird to be honest. I'd always talked about it for a number of years and and suddenly we were on set shooting Rowan with we had, we had amazing sets, amazing cast, costumes, um, makeup artists, um, a, a full crew working away with sound, with cameras, and I, you know, it was, it was, although there wasn't much time to take a step back and just look at it all, it was, it was quite surreal. I have a feeling that a lot of people in this film, in about a year's time, are going to look back and think, oh, Rona was really great. I wish I was doing it again. I also hope that the finished product can um, can show the effort that everyone's put into it, um, no, knowing when watching the film that possibly only five or six people are behind that camera. Scene five, slate two, take one.